This is Grey Merchant of Magic. Recently, the trailer for the new Dungeons and Dragons movie came out, and it got me thinking, shouldn't we have a Magic the Gathering movie by now? This will be the fourth D&D movie, and MPG can't even get one. Well, in actuality, numerous Magic movies and TV shows have been development at various points for over 20 years, with some of the biggest names in Hollywood attached. Today, I'd like to go through all of them. Likes are greatly appreciated. In 2001, Mark Rosewater and some other R&D members were inspired by a recent miniseries to work on a magic story in that format. Rosewater can't remember which one, so let's assume it was The Beach Boys, an American family. Rosewater, who got a start in the ward of TV, created treatment. In his words, My miniseries took place in a ward where everyday people dueled with magic. My protagonist came from a white-aligned village and was well-steeped in the white-aligned philosophy of magic and style of dueling. During the course of the miniseries, he was forced to venture out and learn about all the colors, completing quests along the way. This led to a final big duel against the man who had killed his father many years before. The miniseries ran over three nights and was my attempt to let the audience get a really good understanding of what each of the five colors represented. It was also set up to show a lot of the creatures and spells from the game, as well as a lot of dueling with magic. Unfortunately, the idea never caught on outside of R&D. I would very much have liked to see magic spells and monsters recreated on an early 2000s TV budget, but alas, some things are not meant to be. The plot also seems pretty basic to me, but I recognize a lot has changed since then, and general audiences of the time may have needed more hand-holding for genre weirdness. 2008 was a different time, though. People thought that liking bacon was an acceptable substitute for personality, epic fail was said entirely too much, but most relevantly, hit movies based on comics, toys, and games were increasingly popular. One of those films was 2007's Transformers, based on a toy line owned by Hasbro. That film was the fifth highest grossing of the year, encouraging Hasbro to move forward on films based on pretty much everything they had access to, as movie executives often do. First to be announced were Transformers 2 and G.I. Joe, but soon after, the barrel bottom started getting scraped. Hasbro and Universal announced a four to six film deal, depending on the source, with movies based on Monopoly, Candyland, Clue, Ouija, Battleship, Magic Gathering, and Stretch Armstrong. And yes, you did count correctly, those are seven properties. Maybe some were supposed to be crossovers. Ridley Scott was apparently attached to the Monopoly film. Coincidentally, gaming magazine Inquest had previously jokingly picked Ridley Scott as the director of a non-existent magic film. Bennett Schneer was selected to be the top creative executive of the Enterprise, the Kevin Feige of the games and toys you mostly thought were in the public domain cinematic universe, or the G-A-T-Y-M-T-W-I-T-P-D-C-U. Universal went on to make four films based on Hasbro properties, Battleship, two Ouija movies, and Gemini Holograms, with an average Rotten Tomato score of 34%. The non-Ouija films reportedly lost a lot of money. By 2012, the original deal had fizzled. Maybe worth mentioning is that the 2010 Disney film The Sorcerer's Apprentice had a magic tie-in featuring fictionalized in-universe magic cards based on a celebrity magician character from the film. Currently, this is the closest thing to a magic movie that has been released. In 2014, 20th Century Fox acquired the film rights to the magic brand, hoping to launch a massive franchise on the scale of Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings. My old nemesis. Simon Kinberg, best known for his work with the X-Men franchise, was to helm the series, and Game of Thrones writer Brian Cogman was chosen to script the first film. Wizards of the Coast assembled a group of four people, including Mark Rosewater and Doug Bayer, who interfaced with the people making the movie to help ensure that it stayed true to the Magic brand. Rosewater described the group as both very actively engaged with the project and very excited based on everything they'd seen so far. The announcement was removed from the Wizards of the Coast website sometime between 2016 and 2017, but hope still remained. At the same time, Rolling Stone was discussing the planned Magic movie series positively, based on the excitement of then Wizards of the Coast and now Hasbro president Chris Cox. The article also writes of a slate of Magic video games that will hit double digits by 2020. Maybe we'll do a video on Magic's messy video game history at some point. However, in 2019, Walt Disney Studios acquired Fox and wiped the majority of the existing Fox development slate after the recent poor performance of Fox-produced films. By 2020, according to Mark Rosewater, the animated Netflix show was the only magic movie or series on the horizon. Speaking of which, let's backtrack and talk about the Netflix show. In 2019, Netflix announced a Magic the Gathering animated series headlined by Joe and Anthony Russo, best known for directing films for the MCU and featuring creative talent who had worked on a variety of popular science fiction and fantasy franchises. The show was said to feature an all-new storyline, 
being true to the existing story but set in its own continuity. Chandra served as the face of the announcement. Production would be overseen by Octopi, with animation by the very experienced Bardell Entertainment. The announcement claimed that the series were cross the genres of suspenseful thriller, horror, and drama, with deeply developed characters the likes of which are not often seen in animation. The Russo brothers described themselves as longtime fans of the game, and also speculated that the series could spin off into live action. However, in 2021, it was announced that the original creative team had departed over the ever common differences in vision, meaning I'll be denied my Tobias Funke as a Vodakin cameo. The project would now be led by cartoon veteran Jeff Klein. Animation duties were taken over by Snowball Studios, who have mostly done commercials, as well as a few children's series. The transition was described as amicable, with the Russo brothers meeting with Klein to discuss the show in Water Magic Multiverse. Of that multiverse, Klein had this to say. Magic is one of those rare intellectual properties with such a wellspring of mythology that picking and choosing is half the battle. Every single person working on the series understands how beloved this universe is and feels both the exhilaration and tremendous pressure that comes with translating magic across mediums. Soon after, the first glimpse of the show was given as part of the Magic Showcase. And on, on Netflix. Netflix. It was announced that the scripts were locked and the voice actors cast and recorded. Gideon and Jace will be the main characters. A prequel novel will come out alongside the show, introducing this continuity version of the two characters and showing how they first met. It was also announced that Superman actor Brennan Routh would fittingly voice Gideon. Greetings, Magic fans. I'm Brandon Routh, and I play Gideon in the upcoming Magic the Gathering animated series, coming to Netflix in 2022. For those of you that don't know, Gideon is known for being the strong guy who always stands up for what's right, just, and isn't afraid to fight. Now I understand why they hired me for this. Makes sense. But seriously, uh, I am really excited about this show and really proud and honored to be a part of it. I'm a huge Magic fan. I've been playing since I was 16. A release date of the back half of 2022 was given. A Twitter post described the show as an event series. Additionally, in 2020, We Got This Covered reported that Netflix was also developing a live action film to star Angelina Jolie as Liana. The Magic Wiki is treating that article as notable, but I personally think it's very likely bogus. We got this covered as a trash website, and the article was clearly written haphazardly. For example, the article is about Liliana, but uses a picture of Rowan. It also describes her as a human planeswalker and master necromancer directly off her wiki page. Additionally, it makes the claim that Liliana's story has been thoroughly explored in World of Spark Forsaken, which Netflix will presumably be using as the blueprint for their own adaptation. I find that unlikely. Ignoring the reception of the book, it's the second part of a series, which itself is the finale of an ongoing story. No one's making a first or solo movie based on it. The writer of this article very clearly googled Liliana and picked the first book with her in it that they came across. Final thoughts. I hope the show's good, and also that it comes out. There have been so many false starts in adapting this franchise. I am paranoid that there's going to be an announcement that's cancelled the day after I post this. But assuming it does come out, will it be good? I'm hopeful. I know that Netflix is spiraling currently but they have a pretty good track record with licensed animation. Plus, the talent has worked on some of my favorite shows, and it seems like at least some of them are actual fans of the game, which is usually a good sign. I would describe the animation company as unproven, but I like the few character designs they've released. As for a live-action movie, so far I can only dream. Maybe the D&D movie or Netflix series will do well and inspire them to try an MTG movie. Or maybe they'll fail and take the franchise. Who knows? Also, before I go, I've heard people say that a film is impossible because the old characters are too complex and the new characters are too simple. But I don't think that's actually true. A lot of old walkers being morally gray, with heavy air quotes, or unlikable, is not the same thing as them being inherently complex. And the lore of the old story can be confusing, but the actual story, like the plots and the character motivations, are pretty straightforward. I think the Weatherlight Saga was very much written in the vein of Star Wars or superhero comics, for example. You don't actually need to know how this one region was part of the Thrawn Empire, and then Philagia, and then Omaz or the exact history of Kaldor Bardovia relations to get the gist of the ongoing story. Any relevant information can be woven in organically, if necessary. And to be honest, I feel like most people who say more modern characters are too simple are judging them based solely on old core set flavor texts. Take Jace, for example. Stories with him have explored themes of self-image, masculinity, and abusive relationships. The Shadow comic competently explored PTSD. These characters can clearly handle heavier themes where the story calls for it. I don't know if a magic movie would be good. 
but I don't think it can be immediately run off either. I think it'd probably be interesting at the very least, and I would like to see it attempted someday. Thank you for watching. Let me know if I missed any entries in this mostly cursed history lesson. Also let me know how you feel about the Netflix show, and what you'd want from a live action film. Finally, thank you to my patrons. Please consider supporting me there if you enjoyed my content. Bye.